Hello everybody, my name is Alan from Sauber Lab and today I will answer a question for a few of the subscribers. They ask, Alan, I want to choose Arclone local. Basically, I want to, through the Arclone, create a crypt folder where I can encrypt all my data in a local hard drive. And anyway, I ask why you want to do it, because it don't make so sense. And they say, Alan, I want to basically to keep all my data safe. If perhaps someone get my hard drive from my computer or is stolen my server and try to get all my data that is there, they will not be able to do it. And I say, yes, good idea. And it's quite simple. Through the work loan, you can basically create one mount file or one mount folder. Only you that is running with an encryption key, you can access this one and can see this file. Apart from it, once that uh, this Arclone disconnect or it's not to make the mount with your remote access it, without this key will be basically data that not make sense or will be only encrypted data that it's impossible to open without the encryption key. So if you like this idea and want to learn how to do it, we're gonna show in this video, but don't forget to leave your like, subscribe for the channel and let's see how to do it. Before we start to do any installation, any configuration with our clone, let's see what we have and where we're gonna work. Basically, I'm working with my server. In this server, I have a Intel i5-4590. It's an old CPU, but it's good enough for my needs, so it's fine. As well, in this server, I have a 23.4 GB of RAM. You need so much? No, you can run with less, but as I have this run, floating around, I could install it and it will not affect anything. The version that I'm using from my Open Media Vault, it's version 5.6.16. One thing before I go ahead, if you are using the TrueNAS, you don't need to do this procedure or it's not worth to do it because the TrueNAS already have an option for encrypt your data or encrypt your hard drive. So don't lose time with it because the TrueNAS already do. But if you're using the Open Media Vault or other operant system, the Arclone can do it quite well and run really fast. So let's continue. In my system, I have uh, some share folders. In these share folders, I create one specific for this script activity. This share folder will be called Arclone. And this share folder, it's uh, shared in the SMB as well as Arclone and it's visible for my user. Have this one in mind, now we can open our Samba. Here in our Samba, I already created two folders. The first folder will be called Crypt, where we'll keep all my crypt data and the second folder will call data, where they will keep all my data that is visible. Basically, what you're gonna do, through the Arclone, we're gonna create one remote access, instead of be a cloud access, will be my local access, basically the folder crypt, where they will save all my encrypted files, and that to access it, I will create a mount in my data. Then all my data will be moved from the folder data to my clone. So this data will be only accessible once that the mount is defined. If you, the mount is not defined or the clone remote access is not great, you'll not be able to see. But let's continue. To do all our configuration, we're gonna need to use the putty. We can use it through the SSH to any program that you want, but I like to use the putty, so it's fine. So I come here, my put and I open my server. My put, I uh, use the IP 192.168.1.253 and I already did login as a root. Here I will go with the follow script, arclone config and run it. Okay, if you run it and don't appear anything, it's because you didn't install Arclone. To do the installation is really easy. If you look at the card that I'm trying to put there or the link in the description, you can see one of my videos that I show how you can install Arclone. Basically, it's only two lines. You can look the first few minutes for this video where I show which lines that you can run. And then after this one, you'll be able to do the configuration. In my case, I already have two remote access. That's one is drive and one is script but you don't need to have it. We're gonna start for a new one. To do it, we're gonna go for a new remote. So I will put N and enter. Then I need to define the name of my remote. I can define any name that I want. I can put anything that I want, but my case will put crypt local, only for be easy to remember it. And I put enter. Now they give a big list and ask which kind of connection that you want. 
In my case, I want a crypt, so I will put crypt and I run it. Now they will ask, where is your remote access? As I told you, we are gonna do our remote in our folder crypt. So we need to discover the absolute path for my folder. To do it, we come here in our open media file again, and that open our share folders, and then we are gonna use this absolute path. To be easy, only we come here, inspection, double click in my name, copy, come back to my putty, I already passed this absolute path, I put slash and put crypt because all my data want to be in this folder called crypt. So I put enter. After this one, they ask which kind of encryption that you want. In my case, I will put a encryption standard. So I'll go number one and enter. Then they ask, you want to encrypt the directory? Yes, I think that's interesting to do it because if I have a lots of folders and put, I don't know, data, or I put a scan or I put something, they already know what date and they can look specific to the ones that they want to discover. If it's everything encrypted, it's almost impossible to know without the encryption key. So we come here and put one and enter. Now they ask you to create the first password. The first password you can generate automatically and define how difficult is it, what I strongly suggest you for you. If you're doing the first time, you go put an G. But in my case, only because of this video, I will put a really easy password. I'll put yes, enter, and I will tape it. One, two, three, four, and enter. One, two, three, four, and enter again. So I create the first password. Now you can create the second password. In my case, I want to create second password because it's more secure. Uh, but it's not must, it's better to do it. In the same way, you can generate automatic passwords and you can put G and define how strong is this password. But in my case, I will put yes and put one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. Really easy. And now they ask, you want any advanced configuration? No, I don't want because this is fine for me. So we'll come here and put no, enter. Now they show overview what you have. So you have a remote access where will be this absolute path, the name of your remote that will be crypt local and the both passwords or the both encryption key. Have this one, I will put yes and enter. So now create my extra remote access. So now we need to do the mount. To do it, it's easy. Let's open our notepad. And here I already put as a Arclone mount, my UMask, in my case will be 022, my JD, that in my case will be 100, and my UID, that in my case will be 1000. If any of your users have a different JD, so update it, or you also can remove it if you want to leave only allowed others. But I like to specify exactly what user that I want to access it. So I have this one, now I need to put my mounting point or where is the remote. To do it, I come back in my putty and copy exactly this name of remote, come back in my notepad and paste it. And put two dots and space. Now I'm gonna look for the absolute path for the location of the file that will be saved. It's really simple. I come here in my open media file again. Here is my absolute path. I come here and copy this information, minimize, paste. And as I defined before, I will save everything in the folder data, or maybe I will make the mount in the data. So I put data. I copy all this information, check if this mount is working before I do any schedule job or do anything. Let's copy it and come back in my putty. I'll clear it only to be easy. And now I pass this mount and do enter. You can see that it didn't do any extra line or it stopped running only one line. It's because in this stage, they are running this program. If you close the put, they will stop to run it, but we don't want to do it. We can come here in our Samba or SMB and enter in my folder called data. Here I will create my first file called text and I put test. And now I will create another folder that it's called Alan. And inside this folder, I will create another item called, I don't know, one, two, three, only to be easy. So basically I have one file test one folder Alan and one file again test or one file again one two three. So I can come out from my folder data and I will come in my encryption. If I come here, now I cannot see what is inside. I know the size when it has been created, but I have no idea what is this file without an encryption key. And I can try to open and they don't have format. So you don't know what is it. And the same thing for my folder. You can see that it's encrypted the name of the folder 
And if I open, it's still encrypted. So it's impossible to know what it's about or not impossible. It's really difficult to know without encryption key. In our case, two encryption keys can be up to a thousand bits or how big you need. So now I have my folders. Okay, let me check one thing. If I remove my mount, what will happen? If I come here, put Ctrl C, they remove my mount. So I can come here and try to open the folder data and it's empty. So exactly what I told you, if my mount stopped to work, I will not have any data at all. Or sorry, you're gonna have the data, but you're gonna have all the data encrypted. You cannot access it. And if you want to access again, you can come here and run the same mount and you can access it. But I'm not happy with it because I want to be able to access all the time that the computer start. And then once that I restart the computer, if someone tried to take the computer out for me and don't have my passwords to access my server, they will not be able to access my all my information because it's impossible. Either that they remove my hard drive. But how I do to restart automatically? It's simple. Let's first cancel again this one and I can close my booty. I don't need to use anymore it. So I don't have access for it. What I do in the next step, I come back in my open media file, I close everything to be tight, and I come here in a schedule jobs. Here my schedule job, I add a new schedule and they will appear this page. So I need to define a specific time. No, you don't need to do it. You can come here and put at reboot. Once that reboot, they will reboot as a user, user or root, and that run one which common. The same one that we use to mount it. We're gonna use our clone, mount, my information for the use, allow the others, and my local and location that I want to run. I can come here and save it. And once that is safe, I can come here and put run. One that I put to run, I can put the start, and that they will be processing forever. So I can refresh it. And now if I come here in my SMB and try to open my folder data, it's here. So all the time that I start my computer, this folder will appear automatically for me. And once that is off, all the data that is able to see it's here crypt. That does not make sense at all. So guys, in this video, I show how you can protect your data using their clone through the encryption option. It's not necessary that you need to run it, only if you are concerned about your safety but you need to be really caution that the password that you're gonna use or the encryption key need to be saved. Because if you lose this encryption key, basically all your data is lost and it will take really long time to recover it. The same way that to make your data safe for others people will make it really difficult to recover if you lose it. So don't lose your encryption key. If you like this video and think that it was interesting for you, don't forget to leave your like, subscribe for the channel and see you next time. Bye.